Hey friends, uh, I'm Satish Chaudhary. I'm I'm an AEM developer. I lead a team of AEM experts as part of my job. I was thinking about starting um, a YouTube channel on and helping other AEM developers train and learn, and also kind of learn from others. So this was a long time due training uh, or long time due video from my side, but I thought it's never too late. So uh, I wanted to start my video channel uh, on AEM learning and training. So this video I'm going to talk about AEM and a peek into its history, what is AEM and uh, the evolution of AEM as, as an application server solution. So I hope you guys like this uh, journey with me. I would really appreciate if you can put some comments that will really help me um, to improve on my videos for my next set of videos. All right, ladies, guys, let's jump into the AEM history, a peek into its history. Just to give you a basic introduction on AEM, uh, AEM, as we know, stands for Adobe Experience Manager. It is a comprehensive content management solution for building website, mobile apps, uh, using phone gap, then forms. It also makes it easy to manage marketing content and assets. It's a powerhouse combo for all your digital content and digital assets management. You can get a personalized content-led experience into market faster with AEM, which combines digital asset management with the power of content management system. So truly a CMS enterprise uh, level CMS application. So let's go to the history of AEM. So, Daycomnic CQ5 was originally started by a Swiss company called Day Softwares uh, in early 2000s with the name Comnic. CQ is a short form of Comnic. Uh, Day Software was acquired by Adobe Systems on uh, 28 July 2010 for a good amount, uh, and after that, Day CQ 5.3 was released. So let's go over the history of Day CQ and how Day CQ was acquired by Adobe and how AM 6.5 we have. So I, I got this uh, interesting uh, screen grab from Wikipedia. So if you go by the history, um, we have DayCQ version 3.5 to 5.3 and after that Adobe acquired in 2011 and from then it was Adobe CQ 5 and then came AM6, AM5.6 onwards. Uh, with, with multiple versions, AM also had multiple names. It started with the name called Daycomnic WCM then they called it Scumnik and they saw the CQ, Adobe CQ, Adobe WEM, Adobe WCM and then Adobe Experience Manager. Day CQ 1.0, oh, very very oh, early days of Adobe Experience Managers. It was released in early 2000s uh, by a Swiss company called Day Software. It was built using CGI scripts for Netscape uh, enterprise server Even eventually you know AEM was born on early 20s 2000s standalone application binary uh, oh, sorry DayCQ 2.0 it was again you know early 2000s it was the first time it was like a stand standalone application file developed on top of C it has HTTP server embedded and it also had file system based page DayCQ 3.0, it was released on 2000 and this is when we, it was written as a web application in Java. So previous to this, it was CGI and then C programming. Now the Java application came into picture. And uh, with this, it was HTTP server separated out uh, and we, we had CQSE. It also has content bus storage for connecting to various file format and databases. CQ 3.5 was uh, was about bug fixes. Was improving CQ 3.0 and trying to you know uh, make it more stable. Uh, then came uh, another revolution. You know, day CQ 4.0. It was released in the year 2005. It has the content bus storage over JCR. Uh, CRX 1.0 kind of came into pictures with this, and now it has two web application, CRX and CQ. And also, it has uh, improvement from previous version and a few bug fixes as part of this release. 
uh, then came day CQ 4.1 it was released in 2006 and it was all about improving the product level plenty of bug fixes and more stable version of CQ 4.0 Then the same for CQ 4.2, it was released in 2008. It was also like a lot of bug fixes, um, more stability to the application, more stability to the product. Then the big revolution came, day CQ 5.0, where uh, the entire application was rewritten. Uh, basically, it was almost, they, they created a new version of uh, day CQ, and that was released in 2008. Uh, basic Q 5.2 released in 2009 was all about uh, bug fixes and uh, stability of the product same for day CQ 5.3 uh, it was released in 2010 then came day CQ 5.4 and what we don't have any features available for day CQ 5.4 why because Adobe acquired day uh, during this year and they named it Adobe Day CQ 5.4. It was released in the year 2011 when Adobe acquired Day Software product um, and called it Adobe CQ 5. It has a lot of um, history around Adobe CQ 5.4. In the year 2011, Day Software was acquired by Adobe and the first version of CQ came. Uh, with this came uh, websites for mobile devices, uh, you are able to access workflow. An inbox over your iPhone or iPad or mobile devices. You can do authoring over iPad, campaigns, reports, CRX clustering, annotations, video component, carousel, a lot of components, you know. And and then it, here we had profiles and community consoles and forums as well. So truly, Adobe started kind of uh, making it more powerful. Then in 2012. Uh, Adobe CQ 5.5 was launched with a new architecture, an OS GI based architecture. It has a lot of new functionality for undo and redo while editing. You can have, you can go to previous version and kind of come back to the current version. It it started integration with a lot of analytics framework. It started integrating with a lot of Adobe products like Adobe Search, Adobe Test and Target, um, Adobe Campaign, Adobe Scene, plenty of uh, cross application. Uh, integration as part of this uh, version. It also had secure damn proxy and proxy workers. It also had remote server management via Java extension JMX and also page exporters. Uh, then in the year AM, in the year 2000, AM 5.6 came into the picture. So previous to this, all the applications were called Adobe CQ, Adobe CQ, but this is the first time. Uh, it was renamed to Adobe Experience Manager and with this we introduced Touch UI. Prior to this all all the versions used classic UI interface. AM 5.6 came with Touch UI in the initial stage. Still a lot of development were done on classic UI but this is the birth of Touch UI. Uh, and, and there were obvious improvements in terms of offloading jobs. In 2014 uh, AM launched uh, AM 6.0. This is uh, where Touch UI really become functional. You know, all those uh, introduction to Touch UI were slowly getting into getting life here. So they replaced CQSE with Jetty. Um, they also introduced a new templating long language. So from from GSP they started using Sightly HTL. Uh, they also used a Jackpit Jackrabbit Oak. They upgraded CRX repository from 2.0 to 3.0, and uh, they depreciated the concept of reverse application. Instead, they introduced uh, user-generated content for social community. Uh, and it also has a new implementation for social component framework using handlebar um, templating language. AM 6.1 um, came in the year 2015. It has better touch UI authoring interface. Uh, and also like uh, they introduced cold standby topology. They also introduced transient workflows. Um, and then obviously a lot of touch UI based enhancement. So by this time, um, the focus was to kind of convert classic UI to touch UI interface and uh, decommission classic UI. Uh, in, the, in the year 2016, uh, Adobe launched AM 6.2. Uh, 
it was more of uh, you know touch wise and user in interface improvement it also had dashboards for monitoring queues and content fragment and a table templates for uh, kind of introduced as part of em 6.2 so, so this this were major improvements because this opened gate for headless capabilities um, and it was quite a big revolution coming for us uh, in 2017 adobe launched em 6.3 uh, it has production ready components you know this is one interesting piece which uh, which a lot of people you know try to misunderstand so with this adobe started creating adobe core component called acs with this they have um, created a lot of templates a lot of components ready to use for us you can always exchange that and create your custom on top of it uh, this was a big help here where you have production ready components which you can use for just just like anything uh, experience fragments were big with this version uh, there were online tar compaction tools most stable bulk workflows or uh, different improvement to performance and scale uh, then we have source user generated content 3d assets uh, we have asset templates and high quality file format and color management support as part of this release AM 6.4 uh, has a different style system. It supported uh, sort codes. Uh, it supported expense fragment building blocks and expense fragment integration with Adobe Target. This is where uh, the personalization of uh, customer journey came into picture. It also had structured content fragments and summarization. Uh, the workflow editors. So it was slow conversion from classic UI to touch UI. So is, as part of 2018, we introduced. Uh, as part of 6.4, we have AM inbox. So, so basically, touch UI workflow editor was there. Uh, metadata export and import, cascading metadata rules, assets, and smart tags. <coughs> smart tag is a big revolution because this makes them powerful with a lot of metadata and search capabilities. And finally, in the year 2019, we had AEM 6.5. It's a big improvement from previous versions. This really opened the gate for headless content delivery. It has automated form conversion, uh, reusing workflow across multiple uh, forms. Uh, SPA. SPA was big for all the front-end enthusiasts here. Uh, with, with this version, AEM started supporting SPA. Uh, all for, for SPA application to work, you should use editable templates you are able to use or uh, integrate AM development with React, Angular or any other SPA framework. So quite a big improvement. Uh, I will have more videos um, in future to talk about individual individual enhancements and uh, maybe try to create a couple of demos around it. But yes, uh, this was the journey from AM TCQ 1.0 to AM 6.5. So, just to revisit the history, it started way back in 2000 with DCQ 1.0 and then over, over multiple years of iteration and improvement uh, and through a big journey of learning and improvement we are now from DCQ 1.0 to AM 6.5. Hope you guys like this uh, video and uh, small introduction to uh, the history of AM. Hope you guys find it interesting. If you like, if you have any comments on feedback on my video, please please post your. Those are really valuable, and that will really motivate me uh, to create more such videos. I will continue doing more videos on different functionalities of AEM. Uh, till then, uh, take care of yourself and thank you for watching my video. Have a good day.